back everybody to another thrilling episode of the Super Suck Hour on the road edition. My name is the Super Suck Lord and I'm here in some nondescript love hotel somewhere up the Hudson River with my good buddy over here, Mr. Dollar Slice Bootlegs. Wow. Say hello, Dollar Slice Bootlegs. How are you guys doing, everyone? Um, so yeah, what, what the fuck, guy? We're going to get into your whole backstory and yeah, analyze <laughs> every, every detail of your creative life, but I want to just address straight off the bat. You came to me like a lunatic. You know, you knew we were going to be here up in going to the clutter show. Yeah. You know, and you, and, uh, you, you know, wanted to come on the show so bad because you had something to say and you made this big thing about you need it for your soul. So what the fuck is going on with you, man? Like, what, what? Why, why do you need this so bad? What's happening with you? Man, I am just fucking hitting one of those weird times in life when you're just like reevaluating everything about yourself. And Tell you're me all like, about it. holy fuck. <laughs> I think I might just be a whole like big pile of lumpy shit. And I thought I was a lot smoother than I was. Really? I got a lot of work to do on myself now and just kind of a lot of shit to fucking <coughs> work out and get off and my you, chest. And you think and somehow being here is going to help you do that? Oh, shit. I don't know, man. I, I didn't think I was coming at you all crazy and well, shit, you, man. I just said it meant a big deal to me to be on this shit, All man. right. Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe shit around a lot. Maybe but. I'm exaggerating a little bit for the, <laughs> for the dramatic effect. But you, you, you're, I mean, you're an intense guy, you know, I, no matter how you slice it. Yeah. You know, just look at you. And uh, so it's like, you know, and you've brought that same sort of intensity to your toy making. Yeah, I can't help it. <clears throat> Why? Why? Why are you like this? What's up with you? You're one of those guys who would say that if it wasn't for toy bootlegging, you'd like be dead or in jail or something like that. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I, I definitely, um, no, I, 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 I don't just say that. I would be. It, it, it's like not for dramatic effect or some bullshit like that. Like, I was rock-bottoming the fuck out. Give us some details. Fuck, man. I mean, just straight-up homelessness. Um, no, nah, I was always afraid of needles and shit, and I had enough of my, my, like, literally my best friend for over, like, 18 years lose. I lost him to meth, so I never got heavy into drugs. But I drank a lot. Mm -hmm. And when I drank a lot, I uh, <laughs> would go to jail a lot when I drank. And, You'd um, like wake up the next morning and be like, what the fuck did I do? I'd wake up in the holding cell. It got to the point where it was so routine. I'd wake up in the holding cell, look around, look for the toilet paper roll, grab it, put it on my head, and go back to sleep. Like It was just like, oh, this again. Fuck. God, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fucking miserable. They got to know you pretty good over there, huh? They knew that I was a vegan and would go to Taco Bell because they feed you in the mornings, you know, around six, and they knew to get, you know, a fucking seven-layer burrito without sour cream and cheese. Oh, that's Because nice. they knew me. Yeah. That's nice. They were nice to me, but, yeah, I, um, I, uh, I, I went through a really fucked up period. I mean... I mean, shit, dude. You want me to just start from the the? Why not? Let's hear. Let's oh, hear. Oh my god! You oh. know we we you know we, you're you're a player in the in the bootleg toy game. You're sort of more um more of a second wave guy or third wave or however you cut the yeah, wave. Yeah, I, the I waves think up. I'm a third wave because there was your you guys you like you and Peter kind of and then Peter like, second wave. <laughs> so then I'm, I'm third the first wave. wave. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. See. Like, that, that makes me third wave, you know? That's fair. That's fair. And, um, what, 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 what attracted you to the resin toy making? Dude, I've just, I've always been in love with toys. Like, that is the one thing, I mean, I've got a really choppy memory from different shit. Um, I mean, I can literally remember, like... San Diego Comic Con 1983 hugging like the Walrus Man like figure and having to hand it back to the uh, the, the vendor and like luckily he didn't kill me but like you know being like oh come on dad get me that Cause and he my, wouldn't buy it for you? well I think I already had one at home or something oh. like that my, my dad did you have a fucked up childhood? not at home but yeah I got the shit beat out of me from the time I was like 8 to you know 20 
because even after I was out of high school, I was in the hardcore scene, and I was uh, lower on the totem. Were you like a straight edge guy? Yeah, and like, you know, in the straight edge and the hardcore scene, there's crews, and they've only gotten fucking worse and bigger, but, you know, there was just a certain crew that did not like me, and it took me a long time to realize that it's a lot better to throw punches than to just avoid the situations and keep, yeah. uh, like, being a victim and stuff. But yeah, man, I, I had a fucked up upbringing and just... Getting bullied and shit? Not just bullied, like, fucked up, man. Like, well, I give us some get, examples of fucked up. What do you mean by fucked up? I mean, yeah, bullied, like, getting the shit kicked out what of me What about your parents? Stuff. Like, are they good to you or are they horrible? Uh, yeah, my parents are pretty good people to me. So then where's know? the fucked up part? Come on, give me some juice. Or you were just, like, you were fucked up. I was just fucked up because... way too fucking emotional for your own damn I, good. I, you know what, man? When you you just deal with every single day from the time you're nine on and you have your entire fucking peer group, like, hundreds of kids daily telling you you're a fat fuck, you're a piece of shit, you're worthless, you're nothing, you, you know, fucking hate you. Yeah, I guess, like, I know, that's difficult. It, it, it just, I don't know, for me personally, uh, on top of all the physical, like, uh, abuse with, that came with it, it fucked me up, man, and it took me a long time, like, you know, so, like, after I got out of that, you know, I started doing a lot, you know, I'd party a lot and stuff, because I got into doing hair, I was a hairstylist before I got into doing this, first things okay, first. so, <laughs> <laughs> so, what I mean is, um, go on, so, no, so I mean, okay, no, no, go ahead, no, no, I'm just saying, so, 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 how, how so, what happened, how did you evolve out of that, I mean, because now you look fucking frightening, you're a scary looking fellow, which is interesting, because you're really, really sweet and nice, yeah, and you have a good heart, but like, you've transformed yourself into something that looks a little antisocial. You know, is that by design? Yeah, I mean, shit, man. At the time, you know, I mean, it's subconscious, you know, as a youngster. But, yeah, man, it's one of those things where you just grow up on defense. Like, you're just sizing up every were fucking... Were you a fat, worthless piece of shit when you were a kid? I, I wasn't a worthless piece of shit, but I was really fat. Really? And yeah. that's really, I think, what, why people picked on you most of the time. Yeah, definitely. And I like Star and Wars and sexy, comic look books. Look how sexy you are now. That must feel good, right? I saw you without your shirt on. You look, you look, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's neat you're to have fuck, abs and very, take care of You're very fuckable, <laughs> you know, and you're a creative artist, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's like you're a good person, so you didn't really fucking lose in the long run, did you? Not in the long run, but it did a lot of damage to me and how I, like, approach life, you know, You feel it's run. irrevocable damage? No, not at all. Everybody has ways to grow and change, you know? It's just something I've always worked on, you so know? So how did you find the toy making to be therapeutic to this process? <sighs> well, of, you know, working on yourself. Well, we'll just do the origin story. So you I was yourself out. I was fucking wasted, hanging out um, in my cabin, just on Instagram, looking for girls. And my buddy, uh, True Prey. And what were you doing at the time? Like, what was your occupation? Um, I was selling oil paintings that were hand done in China, bootleg oil paintings of public domain uh, pulp art covers and stuff from the 30s and 20s and shit and getting those made, stretching the canvas, throwing them up on That's eBay. That's a weird job. Yeah, and fucking make your own hours, make good money and how, how fucking... Did, were you an artist too? No. I was making well, fucking hair. Like, uh, right, hair but you art. weren't like a drawer or a painter. Or no, I much. never had any confidence in that, which is funny because I don't know if you know who Bernie Hogarth is. Remind the audience. Uh, Bernie Hogarth is just, like, the fucking god of, like, anatomical, like, I don't know, drawing or dynamic wrinkles, anything, like, that has to do with details. Bernie was the guy. And he was my godfather. And he actually was the one who brought a sketch pad, like, gave me my first pencils and everything. And, you know, I've got a drawing that we did together of the first issue of Nintendo Power, Super Mario and shit. And I draw the shit out of Ninja Turtles and stuff, but I just couldn't ever fucking do it. So I, I can't just gave, draw either. Yeah, I just gave my handwriting's a fucking my nightmare. My handwriting's a joke yeah. too. Yeah, so I, lo I don't know if it's because I have no talent or I just got like some negative reinforcement because I used to draw all the time and just draw whatever I want, and I it was found it very pleasing to me, and it it, it looked the way I wanted it to look, mostly cartoon shit. And then I was like, oh, I'm gonna go be an art major, and I took drawing for my first semester in college. <clears throat> and I couldn't master the, the the charcoal, you know, sketching and realism and portraiture, and I sucked at it, and I failed. 
And then from that point on, it's like, I guess I don't draw. Yeah, in, in, in my opinion, or in my experience, I was like, oh, I guess I'm not an artist, mm. you know? And I always... But the thing was, what brought me into art, again, was, like, tattoos, you know? Like, all my homies were making tattoos. I was working at tattoo shops. Like, I worked on uh, Sacred uh, on, on 365 Canal. Like, oh, near right. oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I worked there, like, during, like, that when the trades... That legendary. Time. Yeah, yeah, and I, I worked there during 9-11, like, all that crazy shit, like... That was a real interesting place, but that's when I started to see I might have a place in art because although I couldn't articulate my ideas, they were ones that they were appreciated by artists who I looked up to. So to get back to the origin, like I was just wasted hanging out on Instagram looking for chicks one day. I, but I think but it's funny that like somehow you found your way into doing like a bootleg art thing anyway like even before you knew about the bootleg tour world you're selling these fake paintings or these manufactured paintings that's like a weird sort of like side like anti-art like or i don't know it's like an attempt it's an art was it an art attempt in any way no not at all man it was the pay my fucking bills attempt but how the fuck did you even get into that my dad my dad is the most brilliant man i've ever met and he's like my fucking hero like there is nobody inspires <laughs> me more has taught me more has shown me the guy's just like a fucking prototype that they couldn't mass produce or whatever but yeah, he, I don't know what the fuck, how he figured it out, but he was like, hey, I'm doing this, you should too. Wow. So, for a few years, that's that's how I was paying my bills, you know, and, and here and there, you know, like, I'd, I'd go work on, like, some farms for uh, marijuana farms and trim and stuff during the harvest season. This is all the stories thus far taking, taking place in California? Yeah, this is all California. Okay. I only lived in New York for, like, a short period of time in 2001. I moved out there to join Congratulations, you picked a great year. No shit, dude. No fucking shit. <clears throat> okay, so you're on Instagram looking for girls. Was that a thing that you were successful at, getting laid off Instagram? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, uh, yeah. So good for I, you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's an old habit that I've broken. But my friend True Prey, he uh, tagged me in this one dude's feed called Star Cause. Oh, I love Star Cause. Yeah, Star Cause. Holy shit! What a rad dude. And um, so I I went in and saw the picture. I don't know what the fuck he tagged me in, but I was like, what is this? So one of the dude's feed. And I saw, like, uh, I think it was you, you did a pink snow trooper, right? Yeah. Yeah, pink, and I was just storm. like, what in the living fuck is that? So I clicked from there, saw your page, and I think I went back to his page, you know, another thing by Falcon, and the, 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 the Sam Sushi, and then that fucking broke my head. And then uh, I, he probably had something by Peter as well. And then that was it, dude. I just fucking... That was uh, July, I mean, not July, January 11th or so, January 9th, or February 9th, excuse of me. Of what year? Of 2014. Jesus, that's like so recent. Yeah. And You're fourth wave, bro. Okay, fine, fourth <laughs> wave, right. Anyway. Yeah, tight. Uh, yeah. Number fourth wave. So I, uh, I saw that stuff, and it just fucked me up. I had no idea what you guys were doing. I'd, you know, always been a part of, like, old-school toy, like, you know, I used to collect two Marts uh, action figure digest, AFN. Oh, yeah, I love that stuff. Yeah, dude, because they had the fucking prototype photos and shit, and they'd have, like, legit stuff, like, from the Toy Fair catalogs way before the internet, so we couldn't see that shit. So I'd always known about kit bashing, but the stuff that I was seeing was clearly not kit bashed. It's transparent. And I just... I got obsessed, and um, I honestly, I felt like for about two weeks that I was, like, on the strongest coke I'd ever had in my life. Jesus. I couldn't fucking sleep. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't stop obsessing. I just kept going to the pages and just trying to figure out what the fuck to do. Uh, there was this one uh, company called Homebrew Labs or Homebrew uh, Pigments or something, and they were the first people I reached out to. I was like, hey, you know, do you guys have any pointers to me where to, what direction to go so I can buy this stuff, you know, and get Keep into talking. it? Keep talking. And um, they just, it was fucking crickets. 
So I was just like, oh, okay, this is um, just like the tattoo industry. So you were like reaching out to people, asking help, like how to get into it or how to get involved yeah. in it, and everyone was like... Well, I didn't even reach out to that many because, I mean, I t came from the tattoo world, and the tattoo world is like, oh, you want to know what I do? Okay, fuck you. So I kind of just was like, I reach out to homebrew crickets. Um, I forget who else I hit up, and it was just, I just kind of felt like an asshole. I was like, I just got to teach myself. So I that's, went how to it, that's how it works. Yeah, so I went to your page, I went to Falcon, Healy, and Killer, and just started from the very bottom of all your fucking pictures, and anything that had anything to do with the fucking... Technical uh, aspect of it. Yeah, anything in your labs or anything, I'd fucking take a photo, because it was before you could zoom in on Instagram, I'd screen grab all that shit, zoom in, look for serial numbers, brand names, what the fuck ever... And it took me long enough until I finally started finding things I punch into the Googles until I fucking finally found Smooth On, you know? Until I finally found the right terminology. And then I went on YouTube to look for molding and casting. And that rules because there's a million different boneheads telling you a million different ways to do it wrong. And only a few things are commonalities that do work. So I just spent, you know, a long time sifting through a bunch of shit until I found a few common themes, and one guy who's, like, tutorial really made sense to me, even to the point he just talked like a total asshole, and then I, I was ready, and um, I, I had a really good friend who had complete faith in me, uh, and he loaned me the, the, the nest egg of a, a thousand bucks to get into it, and I, I, my first release was uh, 420, 2014. Um, and, uh, in ah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, and, and in between there, with the whole, you know, saving my life, keeping me out of jail, I was still drinking and partying when I found the scene. Um, it became so important to me, let's see, by March 29th, I You really have these dates nailed down pretty s solidly. Yeah, I'm weird like that. Okay, it's like some Rain Man shit, kind of. <laughs> Kiwanis never crashed, man. Go on. So, yeah, like, on the 29th, uh, I was out with some of my best friends. Um, I embarrassed the living shit out of myself, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. If I keep this up, I'm going I'll to... I'll never get my toys made. I'll never get my toys made. I'll never achieve my goals. So, um, I stopped drinking. and how, then How did you do that? Just by sheer force of will? I just stopped drinking. Yeah, I said I don't drink anymore. Uh, and then I was out on tour with my buddy's band, Man Overboard, and the headliners were this fucking Disney pop-punk band called uh, All Time Low. And this was April 12th, um, and it was the night that King Joffrey, or Prince Joffrey, who the fuck ever, it was the night of, you know, Joffrey dying on Game of Thrones. He was the king at that point. Yeah, so it was like, fuck it, you know? Uh, I bet I can handle a few beers. And I came to, because at one point or another I thought I was going to become a tagger, I came to just grilling the living fuck out of All Time Low's bus. Like, not even, like, subtly, like, the front of the bus. Jesus. And my friends you just... Idiot. Yeah! <laughs> I destroyed the House of Blues Anaheim. So, I... I, you know... I've played there, ironically. I, shit, I've sang on that stage, too. So, like, it was one of those things, like... I had... I, I got my dick sucked and fingered some girl's ass in the parking lot. You win. Okay. <laughs> oh, anyway, go on. <laughs> I got my friends so high they couldn't play their set one time, but that's not the same. <laughs> anyway, but, so, yeah, so, so, yeah, um... So that was it. I got kicked off a pop-punk tour, a really fucking cheesy pop-punk tour... And I'd already decided I was going to stop drinking. And I was like, man, look at what a fucking idiot you are. And then that was that. That was force of will. I was just done. I have not had that's a drop in, of alcohol incredible. since. That's I, incredible. I, I don't do meetings. I don't do the 12 steps. I have enough accountability in my heart that I can fucking, like, take, like, whatever I need to to apologize or to make amends with those who I need to and whatever and yeah I mean I, I'm going to hit like three the start of my fourth year soon and whatever I just it, it fucked my life up I got two DUIs 
I couldn't drive for two years, man. All right, all right. Spare us the sob story. Oh, fuck it's, off. No, but I'm just. I want to get to the, the more interesting part, which is you know the 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 the, the rejuvenating the rejuvenating and resurrecting qualities of of creative action figure resin bootlegging. Yes. You know, it's like so you so you be you became a thing in this. Yeah. I what, what's up what with the fuck dollar I... slice? What's a where had that what 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 was that about? All right. I mean, I know what a dollar slice is. But yeah. You tell me where it came from for me. All right. So it was a really like pizza is a really special thing to me. Says the vegan who doesn't eat it. No, I eat fucking vegan pizza like it's going on a style. Ain't fucking pizza. Anyway. And, well, dude, we'll fucking eat a vegan pizza, and you tell me otherwise. Okay. All right, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Challenge on. You know, challenge accepted. It, it, I totally accept what you were saying back in the day when there were stop signs because it was like no cheese, red with whatever. Okay. Those sucked. Fuck those days. Now these days it's good. Pizza has always been really special to me. Uh, my family had a pizza parlor from the time I was in like sixth grade. Are you Italian. Uh, my dad is, yeah, um, till, uh, yeah, my mom's Mexican, so, like... Excellent. So, yeah, from, like, sixth grade to ninth grade, uh, we had a pizza parlor, and, I mean, that, that was my first job. I'd go in with my dad on the weekends and open at eight in the morning, prep the food, all that shit, and just, you know, we had, like, all the, the... And that was your first experience selling cheap shit, right? Making and selling something. Yes. And, but this is where it gets cool was also what was going on was I was right next door to the toy store and I was bros with all of them and at one point Power Rangers became a thing and they were impossible to get I went over there, I must have been in 8th grade and I was like, okay guys these are worth a lot of money, I want them when the shipments come in because my dad taught me when I was like 7 or 8 just go ask them at Toys R Us to bring out in our case if they don't have what you want. And right. They'll have what you want. Right. So I was like, guys, when you get the shipments in, just fucking tell me. You can have free food. I'm going to give you free pizza. Just let me buy all the Power Rangers. So that was really my first hustle when I was in eighth grade. And it was, involved pizza. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I had pizza the pizza. I traded figures. the pizza place, the, the pizza part, the pizza for the Power Rangers. The parents would come into the toy store. No Power Rangers, but yo, the kid next door at the pizza place has got him. I tripled the fucking value. I played paintball at the time, which was incredibly expensive. So it's how I continued to have, be able to play paintball and do that oh, sport. You're a really good, good hustler. Yeah, I mean, from the get-go, my dad taught me all this stuff. He had an original Han Solo blaster in the cellophane that, as far back as I can remember from 2, was like, you can't open this. You have to never open this. You can't open toys. Toys you can't open. They're going to be worth money. Keep your comic books safe. Don't bend them. Keep them in the bags with protectors. They're going to be worth money. These are investments. He knew this back then. My dad has been collecting comics since 1954. He went to the very first Comic Con. Like He, he has worked with everybody... From fucking uh, Wally Wood, Will Eisner, um, it sucks that it's escaping me. The fucking Marvel guy with the dots and shit. Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby. Fuck, dude. Hal Foster. Everybody. He had a company called Collector's Press uh, in the 70s, and he hit up all his favorite artists, uh, Frazetta, um, and just... Asked him, like, hey, I want to put out a portfolio set. Will you do this for me? Will you make me original art? And they did. So, fuck, man. Like, that, like, he taught me pretty much everything. I mean, dude, my first job, I was five years old. He paid me five cents a staple for stapling zines wow. for him. Yeah, like, I was stapling zine, comic book zines because my dad's always been a part of, like, different comic book clubs and comic book zines. But yeah, I mean, he taught me all that shit. Like, that was where that came from, to know about that, to know that hustle. Like, you know that one image uh, that uh, Wally Wood did of uh, Vader, you know, with the dildo uh, and Leia? That's my dad. That's, that's through him. That's Collector's Press. Like, we've got... That, that, that's, my dad put that series out. Wow. I grew up coloring that, man. I can remember coloring that at like two and a half, three years old. That was my coloring paper, dude. Hmm, that really explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad is the whole reason I'm the way I am. Like, and my grandma, the, his, his mother. Um, it didn't matter 
what was going on in my life, she always, always, always... She was the Italian one? Yeah, and she just never, ever, ever talked poorly of me, understood Star Wars, loved my obsession with it. Sounds like my grandma. Yeah, and like... My if, grandma worshipped me. Yeah, That's exactly. where all my self-esteem came from. Exactly. I it's, got, you know, I had a rough go at school, too. Not like you, but, you know, and it's like I got a lot of my... You know, my megalomania comes from my grandmother. Yeah, it was it was my grandma, like, just, you know, she enabled me a lot to the point where, like, yo, later on, like, in high school, you know, like, say when Spawn figures were getting really big, and it was impossible to find fucking Malbolgia, that sweet fucking woman would drive me around every weekend, like, our radius is trying to find that motherfucker, you yeah, know? Yeah, and like I know, I know. That kind of stuff. Me too. Okay, so let's jump ahead a little bit then. Um so now you're in the bootleg game. You're you're a bootleg guy. You're in the scene. Yeah. You know? and, 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 how, did, how did you find that? Because you you are a bit of a contentious fellow sometimes, I've noticed, you know, when I look at things that go on in social media, you know, you made a place for yourself at the table bootlegging, you have your fans and collectors and you're you know, you're part of the sort of fraternal... And I got motherfuckers who have my logo tattooed on them, too. Let's yes. not forget that. Yeah, congratulations to all of that. But it's like, you know, you become part of the fraternity, you know, which I suppose is good for you because we've all found the camaraderie, you know, to be yeah. beneficial to our... To and our I love team. all you guys, you know? But, on the other hand, you've had some pretty pretty public feuds with other people. In yes, I have. Over weird shit, like 2-1-B legs and stuff like that. 2-1-B legs? I mean, like, what what... Motherfucker, okay. Oh, man, you are just... You are so misinformed. I love it. Okay, so... Enlighten me. Okay, that's that's the whole point of this, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so what got me my rep is being a pit bull about my shit was... And now, this this is all water under the bridge. I love the shit now, listen, out of the Now, listen, you dude. can name names or not, but whoever you openly trash in this in this segment of the show... I'm I'm a neutral observer. I'm yeah, just I'm, I'm not endorsing. I'm not endorsing, condemning. Yeah, I, I just you know I and I'm just yeah. a journalist. I so tell us your story of beef. Yeah, so it doesn't matter who it was. Anybody who's paying attention knows, but literally took the exact same torso, exact same limbs, exact same legs, <laughs> after jocking the <laughs> shit out of mine for a few months, and then was like, you know what, fuck it. And then took it as his own, released it, and that was pretty new to the scene still. And that was like his biggest piece. It was getting way more attention than anything I was doing oh, or that thing. It fucking means that like I made the exact same thing and he just had the different audience. But it just kind of pissed me off, you know, and I just didn't want that to be a precedent for people to think that that was going to be okay with me. So... I fucking went ballistic. And, you know, I come from the fucking world where that's kind of, you know, like, there's a certain line you just don't fucking cross. And if you do, it's fucking trouble. But that's not who I am anymore. And that's not who I wanted to yeah, be. Yeah, but the thing is, you ha I mean, you still have a point. Like, maybe, uh, you know, it, it's like popping off is not always necessarily the best way to solve a, a conflict. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a conflict that needs to be resolved in some way. And... You know, it's there, there, there. There's different ways you can approach people, or you know, handle it without losing personal control. But whatever, I'm not making a judgment, and I don't even pay that close of attention. I didn't read everything. I mean, people say bullshit on Instagram about each other all the time. Totes. You know about all this shit, but it gets you know into the the larger questions. You know, you see it come up a lot in the sort of bootleg game. You know, me and Killer bootlegs used to argue about this shit. You know, just like who bootlegged it first. You know, who <laughs> took this, and like, where's the line? You know, between like what's okay. Like, I'm famous for using this head and this configuration. So if you're gonna use these same parts, like, you know, make sure it doesn't come too close to the way I do it. And, and it, maybe fucking wait a little bit. Don't be like, yo, you dropped that a week ago. <laughs> that looks so cool. I'm just gonna do the same thing. You know, gnarls. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so, anyway. So, yeah, so say, like, a, a DJ... Somebody fucking puts out a mixtape, 
And they bust out a sick fucking sample that nobody goddamn used yet. And it's just like, holy fuck. And then next week somebody else. Some other dickhead it. does it. But that that's, sucks. That, but the thing, yeah, it does, but at the end of the day, that's what people are going to do. That's what people are going to so do. So it's all, it's all about like, make sure it. that you did it better anyway. Yeah, but that's... You know, make sure that you're remembered as the guy that did it. You know, let people are going to bite it, you know, but it's and like... And that's, that's not a problem I feel. Like, I... And that that's kind of like I'm a cocky asshole like that. But yeah, that's the thing. I'm never worried about somebody doing it better than me i'm just annoyed that like not at all ever like you don't think you can be outdone with my voice the my weird shit that i make and then somebody's like oh i saw that i'm gonna do what dollar slice just did who would do that anyway who would rip off a dollar slice bootleg anyway i don't fucking know can't you come up with your own shit it's so easy to come up with shit isn't it You'd think so, but, I mean, you have Instagram as well. It seems like a lot more people are like, well, there's about 10 or 12 people who do their own thing. How can I emulate out of these ones A, B, C, D, and on? Like, it's pretty fucking obnoxious. Get me out of here already. (laughs) Get me out of here. (laughs) Give us a sense of the future, man. Yeah, well, in the future, man, I'm just planning on just uh, focusing more on... um, Less, uh, less marketable and less accessible shit. Like my newest piece. You're gonna stop making bootlegs? Oh no, I'm gonna keep making bootlegs. Oh yeah, I'm just making bootlegs, but just weird shit, you know, stuff that has no connection to pop culture so much. More personal stuff. Yeah, just more personal stuff. Just stuff working out all my inner and to like pass strife. It off as fine art. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it fine art, but I'll call it art. You know, mm-hmm. I'm okay. definitely. You know, but I mean... And, for, and this is all for sale, or this is all for expression? I, it's both. I mean, I'm going to express myself, and if somebody wants to help me pay my phone bill with it, that would mm-hmm. be fantastic. It will definitely be up, you know, man? Like, it will be in my store. I guess what I'm saying is uh, not necessarily moving away from bootlegs, just moving less away from topical uh, as much. Like the uh, the Apocalypotus I just did, you know, the Trump... Or the the Trump dump. I'm I'm kind of done with that. I think like I'm. That's a crowded field, also. Yeah, it's 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 enough, and I just kind of want to branch out and just make my own weird shit. Like I spent the last year kind of like seeing if I enjoyed you know blending pop culture with the three seven five mainly style, and like it was fun, but I just I don't it's know. It's some pretty well trod grounds as well. Yeah, and I, I just feel like a lot more freedom and like uh, there's just there's a lot less sourced pieces in the in, in the larger scales and just the shit I do I just really want to make really unhappy stuff that gives you nightmares you know <laughs> okay like, man. I just want to want stuff to make you like just feel dead inside you know that's that's what why I'm going the fuck for. do you want to do that. Is that how it's, you feel? Yeah. You like feel it, dead inside? For now, yeah. I mean, this this has been one of the best weekends of my life, but I mean, dude, I, I, I struggle with, you know, severe, severe depression <laughs> daily. Like, it's a, it's a real motherfucker to get out of bed. I know, I know, I know. And, you know, it's just like, I want my art to start reflecting that. I don't want to pretend to be fucking Rivers Como from Weezer, you know, miserable, but writing about Island in the Sun. I want to well, be fucking real. You want to okay. You want to wallow in your misery, well, or I'll, you just feel it's part of working it out. It's part of working it out, and I think it's <clears> also <throat> something that does help other people. They might see it and relay. Okay, hey and man, I'm, be not gonna, I'm not. I'm not going to tell anybody how to do their work. I'm just curious. You know, it just yeah. fascinates me. But no, of course, uh, you're a work in process. You're yeah. a work in progress. Dollar slice bootlegs. I am, yeah, man. Yeah, and I, I ain't fucking going anywhere. That's the thing, man. I'm here till the fucking day I fucking swallow a bullet or that I die. You know, that's that's it, dude. Like I'm not leaving the scene. <laughs> uh, well, you say that now. The scene, <laughs> the scene meaning the scene of life. No, I'm talking about the scene of bootlegs, Come resin. On, dude, that shit isn't gonna be around forever. I will be around forever. Yeah, but you'll be doing your... You'll be... There'll be... There's scenes upon scenes upon scenes in Dude, this world. I don't give a fuck if I'm making ten for the ten people like fucking Yubi that are still around that will still be around, man. Well, you never know, man. Like, I... There will always be somebody. There will always be something. And if anything, on another hand, I'd like to parlay it into my own toy company. I'd like to create my own toy line and lunchboxes and movies 
and yeah, my own universe. Yeah, we all like to do that. Yeah. But we all want to make our I'm own universe it, so, and merchandise you know? the fuck out of it. Yeah. But, you know, it's, I'm just not going to give... Just, just, I'm not going away, you know? I'm just going to keep fucking showing up. Well, so God, well thank God for that. <laughs> thank God for that, because we, know, couldn't right? live. we couldn't live. We couldn't live without you. Oh, Jesus. Dollar thing. slice boost legs. Boost <laughs> legs. Dollar slice bootlegs. Got me fucked up. Is that a strong beer, dude? What is that? No, I've just been hitting that pen like a motherfucker. Yo, for it's the... It's got me the... slurring, man. That thing you brought me has got me slurring. Yeah, man. I gotta give a quick shout-out to Herbal Cruise and Santa Cruz. They really have the fucking best preloaded pens, man. Yeah, they're high they're quality. a little too good, I think. <laughs> That's just because you're from out here, man. You no, know, it's just... just... Because look how small I am. <laughs> thanks for coming on my show. Was well, it, did you get what you felt like you wanted to get out of it? Does it feel cathartic to you? Yeah, it feels good, man. It's good to you know rap with you and be on this. And you know, I was having horrible anxiety thinking that I wouldn't have anything to say. Yeah, but now you won't shut the fuck up. Yeah, well, because you keep talking to me, dick. All right. Well, I mean, no, man. I don't know. I was I was I was nervous around you the first time I met you. Really? When you came up to Dove's house. Yeah. I was nervous. Why were you nervous around because me? Because I man? didn't know you very well, you know, and it's just like, you look like a fucking lunatic, or at least you look like what people think, and you had a bald head at the time. Oh, that's you true. You know, and you had grills and face tattoos, you know, and people oh. make assumptions about people like that. And I do have to tell you, that was right after Strife's 20th anniversary show um, for uh, One Truth, like... And uh, those are like my big brothers, my fair band since I was 16. These mm -hmm. days I tour them, do merch. I had blown out my ACL at that show. So not only was I like the way I look and you didn't know me, I was loaded on painkillers. Yeah, like, and you did, it was, was just weird because I guess you, you, you came up to the, to the Dove party. Yeah, and time. I had no fucking yeah, idea but... who Dove was or what any of that was. He invited me and I was used to back when I used to tour with bands and shit going up to the hills for parties. So that didn't throw me off. But like, I think you're all, weren't you also bugged out because like this is just recently after you discovered like the, yeah. the toy scene and Dude, now suddenly here you are in the hills partying with the royalty of Less it. than six months into the game, yeah. Right, and I you was, seemed a little like fucking, you know, kind of like gobsmacked or whatever. Yeah, I was and just, terrified. And just for a moment or a few moments here and there, I was like, just looked at you and you looked a little... little little like overwhelmed and I'm like yeah I had to go to you who is this motherfucker no yeah. don't you remember I ran to you I was like dude where am I what's going on like could you fill me in yeah because and I was like, like are you I'm... gonna kill all of us or, or just kill yourself <laughs> alright cool <laughs> I mean it was no big deal it was yeah. no big deal but it was just like uh, it was really funny but then uh, but now 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 but we all now it's it's painfully clear what a gentle loving person you are yeah you it's... know and it's like it sucks because I just have old bad habits of, you know, thinking we all like when I was habits. a kid that, you know, I need to size things up or I need to be on the defense of it all times. Well, congratulations and, on your success at that. And now that you've achieved that, there's other levels to unlock of, within yourself that yeah. you, know, you can build upon those things and expand yourself into further dimensions, some of which you didn't even know you could at one point. Yeah, know? that's the thing, man. Like, that's what I want to do, man. You, you successfully made yourself into something. Yeah. And you're still reasonably young enough to continue to make some something out of your life, as Thanks, we all are. Thanks, man. So, yeah. No, I feel like yeah, that. We man. should all be putting each other up right now, man. Yeah. Everything is so fucked up. Well, man, I feel like, you know, you Let's... surround yourself with people that inspire you or that, that bring out the best in yourself... And then you're going to raise yourself to them, you know? Yeah. Like, again, like, I bring up, like, Strife. I started hanging out with those guys. The fucking best at what they do in the game. And just started surrounding myself with all of you guys who I respect. And it just, it, it is what it is, you know? Like, surround yourself with people who make you better. Yeah, and then don't suck. And don't be a piece of shit in the process. <laughs> well, yeah, no shit. That, that, that would be a yeah, fucking... That goes, that goes without saying <clears throat> before I before I start saying too much fucking stupid non sequiturs, thanks for watching the suck hour, everybody. Dollar slice bootlegs. Thanks for having me. Yeah, dude. thanks. Thank this was great. This was great. Thanks for letting me stay in your hotel room. Yeah. Now let's go get into some trouble. Yes, sir. That sounds like a plan. Good night. For more exclusive content, support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash the Shop online at suckadelic.com. Join the newsletter for updates and promotion on Instagram and Twitter, at Sucklord. On Facebook, The Sucklord. Music by The Crystal Pharaoh. 
This has been a Suckadelic Entertainment Enterprise production. <laughs>